Well, there are scores of Bahamians now who have found themselves uh, close to the COVID-19 situation, many of them uh, studying or living in Europe, Italy in particular, which has been particularly hard hit by the COVID-19 uh, virus. Tonight, we speak to a parent whose son was caught up in such a predicament. Mr. Dion Godet, our colleague, joins us live on the Bahamas tonight. Good evening to you, Mr. Godet. Good evening. Now, your 21-year-old son, Christopher Cadet, who attends the uh, Soccer Management Institute, American University of Rome. First of all, tell us what that is. We know he's in a master's uh, program there. Yeah, Christopher has an opportunity to go to Rome and uh, study for his master's degree. And at the same time, one of his goals is to become a professional soccer player. And this opportunity opened at the uh, American University of Rome. So he's over there since August and uh, has been studying and playing soccer. Now you got um, some information as, as, as the world did and, and certainly us here in the Bahamas about how the coronavirus was progressing, um, spreading and the numbers increasing. At what point uh, did you become concerned and, and what happened next? Well, we reached out to Chris about two weeks ago and um, asked him if he wanted to come home. Um, Really, he thought about it, and then he reminded me that he actually had a professional tryout in Malta, and we made preparation for that. But the trip to Malta got canceled, and um, ensuing conversation arrived at the point where we decided as parents that, you know what, we need to bring him in, because we were hearing conversation that we... Um, Flights were going to be closed coming into the Bahamas, and so we made a decision and basically called him about 2 a.m. Wednesday morning, Rome time, and told him, look at his email, and uh, his ticket was booked to come home, and he was on his way the next morning. Now, mommy and daddy obviously will have a different level of anxiety as, as, than, than the child usually. What were his thoughts, what were his feelings while in Italy? Was he uh, nervous, anxious, um, you know, he did actually, he stay holed up inside? Yeah, he actually handled Rome pretty good. I think the biggest challenge was hearing that he was going to come home and be quarantined for 14 days. Uh, but he got over that after we explained to him that, you know, this was the best practice to keep everybody safe. And um, he approached it very positively. And since he's arrived in town on um, Friday, He's um, been um, in the uh, quarantine um, process. We don't know exactly where he's at. But and I, I want to stop you right there because that, that is the central point. He arrived here in the capital on Friday, but you don't actually know where he is. No, we don't. And uh, we've had um, communication with him through digital uh, means, but to say where he is, we don't know. We know he's, um, he's been looked after and he's comfortable. And as parents, we're satisfied that he's home and safe. Now, you don't know where he is. Why is that exactly? Well, that seems to be the protocol of um, the Ministry of Health and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs with regards to quarantine, that we were informed that uh, he can't say where he is and we're unable to go and track him down. What's, what's he told you about um, his experience here in quarantine? So far, he's enjoyed it. He says um, he's comfortable and, um, you know, it's, um, it's different, but um, he understands, you know, what he's faced with and um, he's quite frankly okay with that. Now, this is a different um, home from college experience, to put it mildly. What do you think that reunion will be like when you finally see him in, in a couple of days? Oh, well, if anyone knows his mom, she's going to be overjoyed and very excited and... Um, I guess he would tell you I'm stoic, so it's going to be good to see you. And, and of course, um, um, finally, there's still there's still a lot of questions. It's very iffy when he'll return to school, considering the situation in Italy and and the global situation, the travel restrictions, etc. Are you already talking about that? Yeah. Well, he's um, still doing courses um, from the university online. And as far as a travel date, um, we don't know. We bought a one-way ticket um, in, uh, which was almost an arm, leg, and a finger. But um, whenever it's time to return, we'll get him back. And um, hopefully, you know, he's going to be complete early May, maybe maybe a week after the original date. But um, we will go with, you know, what is available because nobody has control of what's going on.
All right, well, as I've said, you're a colleague here at the corporation, so I can do this. You just hold up your hands for me. <laughs> the heavy duty gloves. I saw you with some, um, seem like disposable ones today, but you are fully armed. Tell me about that and, and how you're keeping yourself safe. Well, the corporation, I, I'm in the sales area and we're coming in contact with uh, folks outside of the corporation. And we have been asked as um, by the um, board and executive management to take the precaution to ensure that we're safe and that this environment remains safe. So um, this is just following um, the request of being a good steward to everyone who I work with. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Gadet, for talking with us. And good luck to you and your family. Thanks again. Thank you.